Slain Back from Hell is an action platformer game developed by Wolf Brew Games and was released March 24th, 2016. This is a re-released, updated version of the game and was originally called Slain. However, due to heavy negative feedback, the game was basically reworked by the developers and released again months later under the current title to much more positive reviews. In Slain, you take on the role of Batherin, a heavily Norse-inspired character wielding an impressively large sword to take on a whole slew of baddies ranging from skeletons, witches, banshees, beholders, and more. Batherin's adventures take him to a wide range of environments, including dark woods ruled by a wolf god, a bloody ghost-infested tower overseen by a banshee queen, and a shitty poison-filled sewer infested by the mother beholder and her spawn, to name a few. Holy shit, this game is difficult. It is Dark Souls-like in the sense that you need to learn enemy patterns and how to counter them if you are to survive. Throughout my playthrough, I died probably close to 100 times in various situations, ranging from complete bullshit enemy placement and design decisions, to I ran past that trap 50 times already and still got killed by it. I'm a fucking dumbass. The game is relatively short considering. If you are really good and don't die nearly as often as I did, you can probably beat the game in about 4-5 to five hours or so but it is long enough to make you feel somewhat accomplished for beating it. The $13 price tag on Steam isn't so high that it should make anyone feel cheated out of their money. The art style in this game is fantastic. The sprite animations are done very well and really give you a true feeling of a dying world overrun by monsters and misery. The environments are extremely detailed and hide many subtle details, usually reserved for AAA releases in fleshed out 3D worlds. The enemy variety feels well developed and implemented to the areas in which you will find them. The music in this game fits in perfectly and is very appropriate. I'm a huge fan of the metal music genre and the heavy riffs acting as background music could not fit in better if it was switched to an orchestral ensemble. Each boss encounter I feel is well developed and that you don't go from boss to boss and feel like they share the same gimmick between each of them. Every one of them requires a different strategy to beat them whether it is timing a strike correctly, using the environment to your advantage, or even using the enemy's own attacks against them. The combat in this game is simple and effective. Swing your sword to do damage, parry an attack at the right time and activate a powerful counterattack, and fire some magic. The magic and regular attack buttons can be held down for a couple seconds and can trigger a super attack that does loads of damage and is often required in some encounters. The difficulty curve in this game is intense. I know the game is meant to be difficult and goddamn is it difficult, oftentimes unfairly. The first level of the game start out as a simple, okay, swing the sword a few times and the baddie dies, and okay, this is how you parry, got it, good. It's generally pretty forgiving. By the time you reach the second level, they turn the dial all the way up to 11, and it feels like they expected you to be a master of everything within a significantly short time frame. While the artwork is wonderful, the actual level design leaves a lot to be desired. The average level is simply go right and fight a swarm of enemies, continue right. Some levels, the design is absolutely ridiculous because of its checkpoint system. When you touch the skeletal pillar holding the blue orb, you get healed to full one time and it becomes a new spawn point for the level. However, sometimes the amount of shit you have to go through to get to one is absurd, and on some levels you get one, take an elevator up, and get another one right after that. Lack of healing items in a modern platformer is a little silly. Checkpoint orbs fill your health and mana to full when you activate one, and very rarely you can find a heart that fills your life bar as well. That is it, however. No items you can carry with you, no enemies that can drop any kind of healing items or orbs as well. Some frustration with the game could have been eased if there was a healing mechanic added in. While I praised the combat earlier that is simplistic but good, it still has work that can be done to it and should be done to it, I feel. When you hit enemies, it doesn't feel like there's any substance to it unless you hit with a counterattack or charge up your primary. Smaller enemies like skeletons or those stupid fucking ghost children should receive a knockback effect to briefly stun them, but they don't. They can just run through the attack and hit you, which knocks you back. Combined with the level design, it can knock you back into a trap or off a ledge and generally just feel like a bullshit death. Overall, this game is absolutely fucking infuriating and rage-inducing. I have scared my fiancé and dog multiple times from moments of pure rage while playing this. However, despite its shortcomings, the game is beatable. A lot of the game relies on skill, like learning enemy attacks and patterns, timing the perfect parry, using your space appropriately, and so on. Some of the time the game requires pure luck, which I feel in a game like this should never ever be a factor. I would recommend this game to anyone who feels like taking on a hefty challenge and enjoys platforming games. However, if you are prone to physically damaging yours or others' shit when in a fit of rage, stay away.